Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about the simulation of a 400 volts grid forming inverter. So this is the system I consider. So one side you have a DC source, so followed by a three phase inverter and uh, followed by a LC filter to meet the harmonic regulations. So next, that is the point uh, where we need to form the grid. So I assume uh, I, I require a grid voltage of 400 volts, 50 phase, three phase supply. So that means 400 volts line voltage and corresponding phase voltage is 230 volts or so RMS value. So for that, I need to carefully select the DC link voltage. So typically uh, the DC link voltage should be greater than the peak value of the line voltage. So therefore, or in other words, it will be uh, usually greater than 1.6 or uh, to two times greater than the peak value of the phase voltage. So correspondingly, so you can select the DC link voltage somewhere between 680 volts to 700 volts. I consider 700 volts here and come to the measurement. So I measure the uh, current through the inductor and also I measure the current through the grid and also I measure the grid voltages and the inverter voltages, right? The first and foremost thing is that, so depending on the uh, number of inverters connected, so you need to uh, measure the power so this is the PI power, uh, means power measurement in the DQ reference frame. So 1.5 into VD, ID plus VQ, IQ. Similarly for the reactive power, it will be 1.5 into minus VD, IQ plus VQ into ID. So this 1.5 is the, uh, comes from the uh, coefficient or the transformation coefficient. Okay. So next, uh, depending on the, the number of inverters, so you need to consider uh, a droop control if it is a decentralized control. So for uh, simplicity, I consider only one inverter. So if it is only one inverter, so what you are supposed to do is that, uh, right. so this portion is uh, no longer required, right? So this is no longer required. So here also, this is uh, no longer required. So these two are the important loops. So one is the power synchronization loop and another one is the excitation loop. The stop one is the power synchronization loop. So depending on the active power, it will set the phase angle. And another one is the, depending on the reactive power requirement, it will set the, or it will adjust the magnitude or the excitation, uh, excitation of the inverter, right? So here, uh, if you consider multiple inverters, in that case, the droop control or the droop coefficient will come like KF1, KF2, uh, different droop controls for the frequency. Similarly, our voltage droop control KV1, KV2, likewise. Right. So this is no longer required. So what we are supposed to maintain is that 400 volts we require, right? That means the single phase voltage will be 230 volts and 50 H. So that means here, F0 will be 50 volts. Because we already uh, because we are not included the droop control, so therefore F not equal to F. So we multiply with two pi that will give you omega integrating omega that will give you the phase angle, phase angle delta. Similarly for the magnitude, so this is no longer required. Uh, this is no longer required because we are using only one inverter. So therefore V not will be equal to V. So your V0 will be your nominal voltage, 230 volts. So this F0 will be your nominal frequency, 50 H. So V0 equal to V and F0 multiply with 2 pi, integrating that, you will get the delta phase angle, right? So next thing is that, so we already studied this multi-loop group control. So we have voltage here. So we will multiply with root to get the peak value and that gives you the VD reference. It will compare with the actual VD. And we have a current a voltage PI controller, and this is the decoupled terms, right? So that will give you the D axis inductor current reference value, and it will compare with the D axis inductor current, actual one. And again, the current PI controller here. And so next it will set the voltage across the inductor. So again, these are the decoupled terms for the current controller, All right? So this will give you the inverter estimated voltage or the re required voltage for the inverter in the D axis. Similarly, so this is for the Q axis. So VQ component will be zero here. It will be compared with the actual VQ. Again, you have a current uh, voltage PI controller, right? 
and its decoupled terms. So that will give you the Q axis inductor current and it will compare with actual uh, Q axis uh, inductor current and you have a current PI controller and that will give you the Q axis inverter reference voltage, right? So here uh, you need to add VQ because VQ we assumed it is zero, right? And VQ will be zero. And this gives you the inverter reference voltage in DQ frame. So further we need to normalize this one, right? Or we need to convert this into ABC reference frame. So we connect, convert it to ABC reference frame and further be normalized by dividing this into half of the DC link voltage. So next we need to implement, uh, we need to uh, use a suitable PWM scheme to generate the firing signals, right? Sometimes uh, if the oscillations are more or sometimes we connect some low pass filter so at this point. So before uh, transforming into ABC reference frame, sometimes we use the low pass filter. And the point is that for all these uh, transformations, ABC to DQ transformations or ABC to uh, DQ to ABC transformations, we require some phase angle, right? So this phase angle is obtained from here, this delta, right? So now if you see the simulation, uh, it will be like this. So as we discussed, so you have a uh, So you have a DC link voltage, as I said, it is uh, 700 volts here. Yeah, DC link voltage is 700 volts and this LF, so that is three milli Henry and the CF that is filter capacitance. So that is uh, typically somewhere between 150, 200 or 400 uh, microfarad, right? So next we have this uh, LC filter, so followed by the, uh, this one. Right. And this is the point where you are maintaining the grid. So this is the point where you are maintaining the grid. So three phase loads are connected here. So one load is connected with these values and additional load is connected or it will turn on at some uh, period. Uh, I think it is uh, around 0.5 seconds, some new load. So will be added to the grid. Right. So I measured the voltages here, inverter voltages here, and this is the inductor current. And these are the grid side voltages, VAB and IAB. Right. The first and foremost step is that, so we need to convert these ABC quantities into DQ reference frame. So this is ABC quantities into DQ reference frame. So before that, we need to obtain the frequency, uh, we need to obtain the power synchronization and the uh, magnitude, uh, magnitude synchronization, magnitude uh, are the excitation of uh, requirement right so this is the 230 volts so that will be our v reference and we have 50 h so multiplied by the uh, 2 pi so that gives you the omega integrating that that gives you the theta right so this is your reference voltage and this is the phase angle delta right or theta here so this is theta is used for the DQ transformation. So VABC quantities, IABC quantities, and the inductor current so will convert into DQ reference frame. And this powers, this is the calculation of the powers. So as I used only one inverter, so this is not required. If I use multiple inverters, in that case, the power uh, will be required. Right. So come to the uh, actual controller. So the input for this one is the V reference, theta, and the inductor are the DQ, uh, uh, DQ inductor voltages and the inductor uh, currents, right? So this is the input here as we discussed. So all these quantities, again, you need to, sub, uh, this is the separation of the D-axis and Q-axis components. This is D-axis and Q-axis components. So as we discussed, so this is your reference, 230 volts multiplied by the peak value. And this is compared with the actual inductor voltage or actual voltage, uh, voltage at the, uh, uh, inductor. So again, it is compared with zero here, and this is the actual uh, actual Q axis uh, inductor voltage or uh, voltage at the inductor. And you have PI controller here, and these are the decoupled terms. So two pi, uh, the two, two pi omega, two pi f into CF. Right. So this will set the inductor 
reference current and we'll compare with the actual inductor current again the pi controller so that gives you the voltage across the inductor again this pd and the decoupled terms so this gives you the d axis reference for the inverter in the same manner so we'll do for the q axis reference right so you obtain this d axis and q axis so additionally you need to add the v0 term right so next we convert this into dq frame of reference sometimes we connect some low pass filter here to filter out the these are the dc quantities right so sometimes we'll connect some small uh, low pass filter so that the d axis and q axis component will be uh, as a uh, dc as possible and uh, the modulating signal will be if it is completely dc the modulating signal will be close to a sinusoidal waveforms so next we will uh, normalize this one by dividing with uh, 0.5 times vdc and we have some saturation block for the pwm so which is uh, plus 1 to minus 1 so next this is the reference power gen uh, reference pulse generation means this pulse generation sin pwm technique or any pwm technique and this is the gate pulses are generated and these gate pulses are given to the inverter right so here uh, so what we are supposed to observe is that so here we supposed to obtain a sinusoidal voltage across the grid so with uh, 230 volts rms value and another thing is that if you are changing the load still it is supposed to maintain the 230 volts so we'll run the simulation Oh, sorry. So I will run the simulation here. So these are the grid voltages. So you can see here the grid voltages are sinusoidal. Right. So these are sinus order here. The magnitude is uh, greater than 300 volts. These are phase voltages, right? So you can see these are sinus order here. And this is the point where I applied the load. I increased the load here. So there is a small dip in the voltage. Some small dip in the voltage. Again, the controller regain and it's still maintaining the reference voltage here. So you can see the RMS values here. So these are RMS values are 230 volts here. So these RMS values are uh, 230 volts phase voltage. Again, some small change, uh, is some uh, reduction in the uh, RMS value as we are increasing the load. Again, it's a regain or again, it is stabilized and reaching its uh, reference value, right? So that depends on the uh, load changing or for example, you are removing the load. So we have a slight raise in the voltages for short, short duration of the time so this is about the grid forming inverter so by using multi-loop group control